Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Paul. Chris Gold. Thank you. Good on you. Um, next, we have Jason from uh, Findleton, Waimari, Harewood. Amber, Jason. Amber. Uh, more flat. The recently <coughs> retired. <laughs> <I'm back. laughs> okay. Good to see you again. Thanks. Thank you so much. Yes, so that was very special. Um, all right. Okay, we're starting. Um, Tenako te katoa. So kia ora, everyone. Uh, on behalf of the submissions committee for the Waimiro Fenelton Waimari Hewood Community Board, we'd like to take a moment to express our gratitude. The effort and dedication invested by every member of this council and the hard-working staff in shaping the draft LTP cannot be overstated. We appreciate that a lot of effort, time and energy has gone into the draft of this LTP and we understand that everyone involved in this process contributes from a place with the intention to provide a foundation that roadmaps a brighter future for Ototahi Christchurch. However, how we get there is different for everyone. It's our role as elected members of our community to represent the views of our community. And please note, our feedback are not criticisms, but reflections from what we've heard through our community. And so we must also thank the incredible staff and governance team that support our board with assisting us with engagement sessions, with residents, workshops, and the ongoing support the team provide to help us put together the submission. Um, we, we gather that the written submission that we provided has been read. So this presentation is an opportunity for us to highlight and reiterate some of these key points from the written submission. So, um, and in no particular order, uh, theme one, Regret over lack of service level review. While we acknowledge the effort invested in the draft LTP, we must express our regret over the oversight and not delving deeper into assessing service levels to identify potential cost saving measures. In a climate of escalating living costs and palpable financial strain for many residents, it is imperative that we leave no stone unturned. The absence of a comprehensive review raises concerns about the balance of the plan and its implications for our community's well-being. Moving forward, we emphasise the importance of conducting the required analysis to ensure that our financial decisions are informed and equitable for all stakeholders. Our, th <coughs> our, theme, our second theme, concern over the proposed rates increase. So, we share a concern over the substantial proposed rates increase outlined in the draft LTP. Given the significant financial challenges confronting both the council and our residents, difficult decisions must be made with prudence and foresight. The absence of a comprehensive review of service levels is a missed opportunity as it could have potentially unearthed avenues for cost savings and efficiencies. We must reassess our approach to strike a balance between maintaining essential services and infrastructure while alleviating the financial strain on residents. Exploring alternate, alternative solutions and avenues for cost reduction should be prioritised to ensure a more equitable and sustainable outcome for all our stakeholders involved. Uh, theme three, emphasis on transparency and accountability. So transparency and accountability are foundational principles in our governance. We must ensure that every decision reflects the needs and expectations of our community. The lack of clarity surrounding operational spending and resource allocation raises concerns about the inefficiency and misalignment within, with community priorities. Conducting a thorough level, levels of service review could not only have provided opportunities to optimise operational spending and allocate resources where they can deliver the greatest value for our community, but would put more trust back into council too. Specific concerns such as the lack of maintenance budgets for certain assets highlight the need for a more nuanced approach to resource allocation that addresses community expectations and priorities. And one of the examples that we put in our written submission is um, around the sculptures throughout the Northwood area. Uh, urgency of essential projects. So as a board, we appreciate that submitting on the draft LTP is not an opportunity to provide a Christmas wish list, especially as we know that for every project we ask, the, this has a direct hit on the ratepayer and its residents in our ward. 
that get hit hardest with rates. However, we cannot overlook some of the essential projects that have been removed from the LTP. One project is the Soyuz Arms Greers Northcote Intersection Improvement Project, which has been removed. This intersection is dysfunctional in its current state and improvements have been promised to the community for a number of years. The board highlights that 14 transport projects within our ward have been removed from the LTP. Of those, this is the one we are most concerned about retaining. Uh, theme five is importance of evidence-based decision making. So in all our endeavours, we must adhere to evidence-based decision making. Transparent and robust evidence is essential to justify investments and ensure that resources are allocated effectively to address community needs and priorities. And in the feedback sort, there were specific questions regarding reviewing levels of service and changing aspects of the capital programme and spending. As explained above, it's difficult to answer this question when a thorough review was not undertaken. The suggested climate fund. We were confused while the council was asking us whether we supported adding funding for climate change when this was listed as the council's top priority. We'd assumed this would already be included. However, we have some concerns about a specific fund around transparency. Uh, we have some concerns about a specific fund, specifically around transparency and accountability. Clear criteria for fund utilisation and robust mechanisms for oversight are essential to ensure that the fund effectively safeguards council assets and addresses emerging climate related issues. As the fund suggests, there isn't specifics on how much the fund would be, who would be eligible, how this fund would impact other projects, so more information on this would be needed. Uh, theme 7, caution in financial planning. So lastly, we just advise a bit of caution around the financial planning, particularly in bringing forward funding for projects such as the Coastal Adaption Planning Programme. So while we recognise the importance of supporting communities in need facing the threat of climate change, it is crucial that we proceed with clarity and foresight, understanding the infrastructure required, its associated costs, and effective planning around this are paramount. This not only ensures the fiscal responsibility of the council, but also provides peace of mind for residents impacted by climate related challenges. Balancing immediate needs with long term returns on investment is critical in this regard. We must explore alternative avenues such as some suggested property sales to free up capital and reduce operating costs. By, by doing so, we can ensure a sustainable and prosperous future for our community while effectively addressing the challenges posed by climate change. This approach allows us to fill our, fulfil our duty to both current and future generations, safeguarding our community's resilience and well-being in the face of uncertainty. In conclusion, the Board reaffirms its commitment to serving our community with transparency, accountability and foresight. Together, let us navigate these challenges with resolve and determination, guided by the principles of good governance and the collective well-being of our community. Thank you for giving us the opportunity to share some of the key points from our submission. Thank you very much. Um, Sarah, please. Kia ora, thanks so much for that. I'm just wondering, you mentioned several times about the um, level of service review and a concern that it kind of hadn't been done. Did you um, get given access to, I mean, they were all online, all the workshops, the public workshops that councillors did had large agendas attached, which had all of the details of the levels of service and the proposed changes in those? Were you made aware of those at the time? We, we were aware that those conversations were had. Um, the, uh, the, what would you say, the, the community feedback that we got was that the rates levels that are being proposed um, didn't go far enough so that they were more interested in hearing about, you know, further things the council could do to make savings other than those that were already kind of that have been put forward. Yeah, you said just the, the, all the documents; those were were public. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Go team. I was probably just to clarify that one. So, uh, was your point around that was just around your expectation was the council would look at? You're disappointed the council didn't look into that to then provide the information to the community. Correct. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. What about another minute? Uh, uh, you've had one. Yep. Cairo. Uh, thanks for that. Um, really clear. The uh, just on the, the you mentioned the sculptures in, in Northwood. I was a little bit confused. Was there was that a you want more maintenance on of those sculptures or less? Yeah. So that's just an example what, which we've come across where um, with some of the developments that happen around town when these assets get handed over from the developer to the council, depending on the type of 
um, features or elements that have been been put in by the developer they're not included on the maintenance schedules at council so just with those as a small example we're concerned that there might be other assets or other assets that have been handed over to council that aren't on those schedules that are either deteriorating or need maintenance but aren't actually being captured in that right right would would, would that would maintaining those yep, we're all good oh sorry that's a, okay that's fine <laughs> thank you mate it will be it gets dark at nine o'clock okay <clears throat> thank you very much for your submission brilliant you. good to see you again <laughs>